doing here today. All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, our apologies for <laughs> that little technical issues that we just encountered. Um, so good afternoon. Thank you for attending our class today. Um, my name is Lin Deng. I am a sales executive for Chicago Title here in Santa Clara County. Um, Melissa McRoberts is my um, ESCO officer who's been in business for too many years to mention. <laughs> so um, combined, we have a lot of experience and knowledge to help you grow your business and provide knowledge for your yourself and your clients. So today's topic, we will be covering, you know, there's, I work with a lot of realtors and a, a lot of times, um, even the veteran realtors still having problem how to prepare a net sheet and um, understand it and how to explain it to their clients. So today's session is about that. Hopefully you work, uh, walk away with lots of knowledge and be able to do one yourself. Um, so with that being said, we're going to start the presentation. When, when so, you said that, Lynn, that they would be able to do it themselves, I, I had to hold back a laugh. <laughs> we are always here for you. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, um, of course, we, we like to be here 24-7 for you, but there are times you won't be able to get a hold of us, and this is the time that you're going to need to do it in front of your client. So have that knowledge will help you for sure to be that uh, deal or transaction or listing that you are hoping for. All right, so without further ado, let's talk about what is a net sheet. So we all know a, a, a seller's net sheet is a document uh, typically prepared for the home seller that give you a breakdown of you know, the sales proceeds, closing costs, property tax, CD transfer tax commission, um, et cetera, um, and, you know, payoff information, uh, balance, and so on. It, it allowed the seller to see how much they would net if it sold for a certain price, okay? That's what a net sheet is. I think, I think this mic can come. All right, so the next slide here, um, for those of you that don't have this app, it's a must have app, is Chicago Agent One app. Um, it allows you to provide buyer's net sheet, uh, buyer's estimate and seller's net sheet within 10 to 15 seconds. Um, if you're interested of getting one, please, at the end of the presentation, is to email, you have my contact information, please email me your contact information, your full name, your um, email address and phone number. And I'm happy to set one up for you. And um, so you have access to it, okay? Next slide, Michael. Don't fall asleep now, <laughs> I need you. <laughs> so um, would you be able to open your uh, chicagoagent.com web app so that way we can go through um, a scenario right sure thank you uh, this one here yes uh, right. but you yeah actually you want open a different browser you just give me a second Chicago chicagoagent.com like live web app so that way I can access it. Sure. This is chicagoagent.com. That's it. That is the one. So, so guys, this is the app, right? Um, the first thing is to the left, make sure you are um, selecting the correct county. So if you're, you know, you're doing it for a net sheet for Santa Clara County, make sure you select the correct county so that way it will pull in the correct fees and who pays what for that county for you. Santa Clara, California. The screen right. is a little far for me. <laughs> 
Okay, so Mike, can you help me um, possibly put in an address? Probably. Do you have an address? Oh, I can tell you an address. Um, yeah. I'll give you one. All right. How about, um, let's go with this one. Just, oh, is this Santa Clara selected? So I need to find Santa Clara County is selected. Okay, let me find one. Okay, let's try this one. 407. 407? Uh-huh. Avenida, A-V-E-N-I-D-A. A-V-E-N-I-D-A. Teresa or Espana, which one? Palmas, P-A-L-M-A-S. San Jose. Correct. All right. How much are we paying for this beautiful house? Um, I'm going to just, you know, say 1.3. All right. So it's given us, you can see, home link, property tax estimated 11. So just click uh, next. Or ex no, just, I'm sorry, exit out. All right. Cool. So what is home link? Home link is now select um, included in the Chicago Aging One app. And this one does, it has the... Um, uh, feature where it will pull up the property tax information, um, last year's property tax information, and the loan balance on the property. And what does it show there? Conventional. Um, um, down to price. You'll be able to see a property tax or anything? Um, no. Can you scroll down a little bit, Mike? Okay. So it did not pull up in this case. Well, yeah, property tax is 11701 oh, There we right. go. It's so there. you know what I mean. Majority of the time, um, it will be able to pull up last year's property tax information and plug it in there for you. And loan balance, too. Okay? Right. Majority so of the All right. So next thing is, what is the sales price? So let's say a million three. Okay? I got and buyers then, for um what's the next one broker. broker fee okay so it is set a default for six percent but say you negotiate it and it's five percent so if you change this to five it will split equally between the buyer's agent and seller's agent but say if there's a difference between percentage between the buyer's agent and seller's agent then click um the uh, the wheel at the end of that field and then you can manually enter it, okay? So say if you put 3% for buyer's agent or 2% for seller's agent. How about that? Perfect, perfect. God, it's so tiny. <laughs> All right, so. I was just sort of missing, but how about, um, how about that, okay. So it doesn't really matter in the showing, um, right? Correct? Right. Done. Broker fee for course, this estimate only or for all future? Right. So you do want to save for this estimate only because every transaction is different, right? And the next field is? Repairs. Repairs. So say if there's repairs that you um, maybe advance it to the seller in advance, then you can put that in and it will be deducted out of the net um proceed or say if they're staging all that information you can put it in here okay then the next one is miscellaneous, miscellaneous. Uh, same. you can just uh you know for staging for credit things like that you can put it in there and then the next one is um of course if you are doing a, a listing uh, appointment in front of your um, seller always ask in this case it did not pull in the loan balance maybe they own it free and clear right but um, always ask the um, seller if there is still a balance on the house and say if there is two hundred thousand and you can put that in there mike where loan balance is Melissa is going to be my eyes because the monitor is a little yeah. far from me and the prince is very it's tiny. Just 
So interest rate right now is set a default. Oh my goodness. So yesterday I did a scenario for a client. Interest rate, interest rate showing up on here was 4.25. Last week was 3.75. So it's creeping up. Um, so today is four and a half. So as you can see, um, the app will update the national average interest rate for you. But of course, if your clients, um, oh, this is this is different. I'm right. sorry. This is a seller sheet. So right. therefore, it estimates <laughs> it estimates that that's the interest rate on the loan. Now it has a cool feature I wanted to show you. So if you click on the wheel at the end of that interest rate field. So say if you ask the seller, when did you purchase this property? So say if they just pick a year, Mike. Say if you move, whatever you want to click. Notice right. that it will give you average interest rate for that year. And if the seller doesn't remember what's the interest rate, then you can just you know select that and use it for now for the purpose of an estimate for your client. So pick whatever year you want, Mike. All right, I did. Okay, great. And then hit use. And click on use. And then it will plug that in there for you. Can, can I can I make a comment? I don't mean to interrupt about sure, this. Sure, sure, please. So if you're wondering, why do we need to know the seller's loan's interest rate in order to do a net sheet, right? If any of you are wondering that. Maybe you could, you want to take that because I'm not sure everybody understands. I, I've been asked, who, yeah. why do, what, what difference does it make what the interest rate on the seller's loan is? So when you're going in for a presentation, um, when you're going in for a presentation with a potential listing, you want to have all the information that you can. Um, and you want to be able to provide them with an accurate quote as to what they can expect when they sell their home. What are they going to net from this? How is it going to benefit them? So when you're you're calculating, you know, you're, you, you did your comps, you said, okay, the property's value is this amount, then, you know, if they have a mortgage on the loan you want or a mortgage on the home you want to make sure you take that into consideration because they're going to we're going to deduct the commissions from the sales price we're going to deduct the loan that they owe from the sales price to get what they owe, to get their net so, so the way i would say, yeah. the way i would say it is um interest is paid in arrears which means that when you make your mortgage payment on April 1st, you're paying for March's use of the money. So let's say that escrow closes near the end of the month, like on the 20th or something like that. That means that the seller is going to be charged by the lender 20 days worth of interest, right? If it closes on the last day of the month, they're charged almost the whole month's worth of interest, which of course could be thousands of dollars. And if you don't take that into consideration, your net sheet could be off by thousands of dollars and uh, that could be an issue with the client. Yes, yeah, so Melissa will cover that on the next uh, slide because right now I'm showing you as to how to put one together. And then Melissa is gonna go over line by line as to how to um, to explain it and understand each field and each line, what it means, how we uh, derive that number. Uh -oh. So the next one is. I um, lost. Give me a second. I may have. Let me do this quickly. All right. So one. <laughs> I'm five percent. That's fine. No repairs. Um, property taxes. Uh, that we wanted to call the yeah, it said a default. Yeah. So why don't we just leave it at that? Loan balance was two hundred thousand interest rate. Mine wasn't much different. So okay. next is city transfer it's tax. City transfer tax. So always, always uh click on it because you're gonna be in different county when you do the estimate. And of course, different CDs have different percentage and CD transfer tax. So in Santa Clara County, there are three CDs that require CD transfer tax. So if this, well, this property is in San Jose, so we're gonna click on San Jose. 
and then click X. It'll bring it you back. Be, there we go. Yeah, all right. right. And then click on edit. No, no X. X. Right. X, right. X. X. Right. X. Right. Thank you. So that will plug that 3.3% in there. Now, I also wanted to point out this app now has a uh, capability to calculate if um, the CD transfer tax on measure E, right? So if the property is sold above 2 million, it will calculate for you once you put that in there as, a, as combined with the regular CD transfer tax. So it's a great feature that it has. Now you are done. You just have to select estimated closing date and then right. click compute. All so right. to so do that, just, right. So you it can, does it automatically do 30 days? Um, well, the way it works is when you, you select 30 days from your previous estimate, it kept that information in there. But for someone say it's new and this is their first time using it, you notice it's going to show today's date. Okay. Whatever the date right. they're creating the next well, year. So click on computer. We're getting a lot of questions. At the end, we're going to go through all the questions. And yes, this will be recorded and available for a nominal fee. <laughs> right. Five cents. <laughs> okay, so this is your net um, for the proceed to go to the, the, uh, the seller. So basically, you can see it's really easy. And down below, it shows what is it yeah it shows sales price and all that if you want to see detailed closing costs just click on that there you go you can certainly edit it if you want so click on edit you have the ability to take out any of the fields that you don't think is applicable to this transaction or you can add another fee so some people add um tc transaction coordinator fee what else home this? warranty home warranties um things like that so you know whatever it is that you think that um the seller need to pay you can certainly add to it then go back up all right and it looks like this would be something they might want to edit for example the home protection which i assume is the home warranty 350 is a little on the low side no. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So once you download the app, you, you have the ability, which I will show you um, later on, that you can certainly go into options and you can set your own defaults. So I have agents have, you know, some agents will put all inspections in one lump sum amount. Uh, some like to have a breakdown. So it's, you know, you can customize it. That's, that's what okay. I'm saying. All right. Done? Now you're ready to share, right? So to the right, you will see that share. Um, so this is one template. To the right of it, you have many um, choices, whatever, flow your boat, <laughs> whatever design that you, you like, you can select that and you can certainly send it over to your client. To the left, I also would like to um, show you where it says English, Michael, to the left. Okay. Yeah. You can certainly translate this nest sheet into other languages. Okay. All right. And I have, you know, tried different languages for clients, and you know, I show it to a Korean realtor, Russian realtor, and they they said it's really right on. So it's the translation is pretty good. So now you're ready to share. Just you can share using email. Uh, you can post it on social media. Um, if you use the phone, you can certainly text it as well. So do we really post people's net sheets on social media? Well, it's it's just about an example. No, you don't. <laughs> when you do that, you can you know you can uh, remove the, the property address. Um, you use it as a marketing piece. Yeah. No, I understand. I'm just trying to make things difficult. All right. <laughs> and you do such a good job. <laughs> I know. I have enough stress today. <laughs> All right. Uh, so these are very nice. Make sure that you save it. 
so th next time you need to come back and make some you know editing then you don't have to recreate the um the net sheet like down here right and then after they get the listing they should be opening the order with you is that the next step we will really appreciate we it would love that. <laughs> it will be the best team you ever work with <laughs> We always smiling. We always there for you. All right. So um, that's pretty much for that. Go back to the presentation and let's look at the next slide. Oh, there's more slides. I forgot all about the slides. Okay. <laughs> all right. We so go. we went through that. Should I be? How about that? That's perfect. All right. So the floor is all Melissa. <laughs> all right. So the purpose is this is what a net sheet would look like if we were in contract and or if you've got a listing and you said, Melissa, can you send me an estimated net sheet so that I can go over it with my sellers? This is the format that we would that I would share with you. So I went up and prepared a mock one and wanted to go through it with you as if i would if your seller was sitting in front of me so if your seller came in to sign off their paperwork this is kind of how i go over the closing statement um, i always start from the top chicago title is the escrow company our estimated settlement date and disbursement date which are one and the same is march 31st shows who the escrow officer is it confirms who the buyer is, who our sellers are, the property address that we're selling. Always want to make sure that information is correct. And then I just start from the top of the figures and work my way down. So I go over the sales price, which is 2.2. We talk about the prorations of the property taxes. So right now we are in the middle of the second installment of taxes. The fiscal year for property taxes runs from July to July, unlike our normal calendar year that goes from January to January. Um, so right now we are in the middle of our second installment. The second installment is due by April 10th, and we are prorating taxes from January 1st, 2022 to July 1st, 2022. So if we're closing escrow on March 31st, the seller has already or should have already paid their property taxes that are due April 10th. So the seller is going to be responsible or get a credit back from the close of escrow, which is the 31st, to July 1st because they don't own the property anymore, right? They've paid to July 1st, but why should they have to pay when they don't own the property? So we're essentially gonna give them a credit in escrow for those taxes and charge the buyer the difference. So the buyer's gonna get charged, the seller's gonna get a credit for the portion where they no longer occupy the property. We just talked about commissions with the app. We're gonna list out the commissions and I break them out um, for listing and selling. So if you are got a listing and I send you a net sheet, always double check that. Um, I may have looked at the, I may have them just estimated because I didn't have the information offhand, or I looked at the listing agreement and maybe it's changed from the listing agreement. Just double check that I've got that split right. The next section is our title and escrow charges. So we have a California FERPTA withholding fee. We have to have our sellers complete a 593 which is a tax form that indicates whether this property is their primary residence, if maybe they are taking a loss or zero gain on this property, are they doing an exchange, are they an LLC? The seller will need to complete this form and advise us. Once this form is complete, at the close of escrow, we have to send it via Federal Express directly to the Franchise Tax Board. So there, we, so there we charge a $45 charge for that. Next is our escrow fee. If you notice, this property is in Santa Clara County. 
So in Santa Clara County, it is customary for the seller to pay for the escrow fee. It can be negotiated based on your contract negotiations. But for this one, we are charging an escrow fee to the seller, which is based on the sales price of the home. We always have an estimated courier fee. There are times where whether we have to pick up a deposit from the buyer or if there's a homeowners association and the seller needs to give me a check so I can deliver it to the association, I'll hire a courier to have that. We build in that courier fee as an estimate. If I don't use it, I'll remove it or I will adjust it to actual once the escrow is closed and I do my final audit. The owner's title policy, again, this is based in Santa Clara County. It's customary for the seller to provide the owner's title insurance to the buyer. Um, again, this fee is based on the purchase price of the property. Mike, if you could go to the next one for me. Mike, did you fall asleep on me? <laughs> Mike. Hey there. I'll text you. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Here we go. I got Thanks, it. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You so government <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> government charges. Um, this is the, these are fees that are not associated with Chicago title. These are fees that Chicago title actually pays to the city, to the county for recording and transfer tax and things like that. So city transfer tax. And if you notice um, right there where it says city transfer tax, it shows a total amount of 7,260. That is the total amount of city transfer tax. Again, customary in Santa Clara County, the seller and buyer split this fee 50-50. So the actual charge to the seller is $3,630. The next one is the county transfer tax. And the county transfer tax is based, is $1.10 per thousand. So if you take the sales price times $1.10, you'll come up with the county transfer tax. And typically the seller absorbs that cost 100%. And then again, we were talking about payoffs and why payoffs are so important if the seller has a current mortgage. So right now we're estimating that they have a current mortgage and it's the amount is 275,000. It actually even gets broken down further. As Mike had mentioned before, you pay interest in the rears. So we can, we'll get it more detailed and dial it down to where it shows. If we're closing March 30th, as Mike mentioned, if they haven't made their April 1st payment, they're gonna pay interest from March 1st through the close of escrow and usually a couple extra days more because we want to make sure that the payoff has time to get there, get processed and applied to the account. There's also a couple in ancillary charges um, associated with the payoff. It would be a recording fee to remove that lien from the property. Um, if you remember on our title report class, our title report will show that there's a mortgage on this property and the only way it gets removed is by um, recording what's called a reconveyance with the county. Typically the mortgage company that we pay off will prepare that and pay that fee, but it does get passed on to our sellers through the payoff. The last section is our miscellaneous charges. So right now we have an estimated mobile notary fee. Regardless of whether your seller comes into the office or chooses to have a mobile, mobile notary meet them, there is a notary fee. We have to charge a minimum of $15 per signature for a maximum of $150 if you come into the office. Otherwise, if we hire somebody, it's usually between $175 and $200. Now, our seller in this particular scenario has not paid their property taxes yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and charge them for the full installment of taxes. But remember up top earlier, we gave them a credit from the close of escrow to July 1st. So I always like to make sure that yes, you're being charged that amount. But if you remember up top, 
you're getting a credit back for the time that you do not own the property. We have a home warranty, which again is negotiable, depends on your contract and what you guys have agreed upon. This one is estimated at 450. There's the natural hazard report. That's the industry standard basic report of 123.95. And then for this one, I wanted to estimate withholding. So we're pretending that this property um, is not their primary residence. They have this as an investment property and now they're gonna sell it. They've chosen not to exchange into something else. So they are subject to withholding. They completed my 593 and they're subject to withholding. Withholding is you take the sales price, so the 2.2, the full amount, and you times that by 3.333%. That amount is gonna come straight off the top and go straight to the franchise tax board. And they, once the sellers next year file their income taxes, report that they sold their home, they're gonna report that they've already paid this amount, whatever adjustments need to be made with their CPA or tax accountant, that'll be made. If they're due a refund, they'll get a refund. So then we have our subtotals. And I just want to make a note here. A lot of my sellers and buyers alike get hung up on our subtotals. And all they are is just a collection of the totals of the different columns because we have a debit column and then we have a credit column. They really have no value. And I remind them of that. What we care about and what we're concerned is the balance due to sellers. So we have our sales price, we've deducted our commissions, we've deducted the title and escrow fees, we've deducted the government charges with the property tax or um, the city and county transfer tax, we've deducted the current mortgage and the miscellaneous fees, and the seller can expect to receive a net of $1,705,539.71. So that's basically what they can expect. I don't know if we have any specific questions regarding that. Anyone? I can't see the questions. We have a Hi. lot of questions. Are we at a questioning point? Yeah, we are definitely at a questioning point. All right, so I wasn't sure if they were still, well, there's still more slides, okay. Um, so questions, let me pull them up. You guys can probably also see them. Uh, questions, questions, questions. All right, so starting at the beginning, uh, we share a copy of this PowerPoint. Is that what you sent us for a handout or uh, if, do they get a copy of the PowerPoint or is that for- They can have a copy of the PowerPoint, um, absolutely. Uh, again, it's a mock statement. Um, I really just kind of wanted you to have an opportunity to see what it looks like um, and to have it you know, in your hand. And I can also send you just the PDF of this form so you can kind of print it out and go over it, make notes on it if you like. Um, I'm happy to do that as well. Uh, so if they wish to get one, they would contact Lynn? Yeah, I did. I just, Lynn has a copy or they can email me as well. Um, and we can put that together. All right, and I've just pasted Lynn's contact information into the chat. Perfect, perfect. Uh, Monica says it's a great app. Uh, Audrey want the net sheet, so she gave us her email, which we're not going to say aloud. Uh, <laughs> how did you select the county? And they're talking, that would be a question going back to Chicago Agent 1, mm -hmm. right? And the county, can I, I'll answer this, is in the top left under next to Lynn's picture, under Chicago Agent 1 is where you can select the county. Lynn, what is P and one mean in buyers? So I think P and I is principal and interest. Got yes. seen That's, you know. Um, do title and escrow accept purchase money from overseas or must it be in a USA bank account? No, we can all, we can, you know, it's funny when you buy a property, especially if it's all cash, money can come from anywhere. You can tell me your name is Mickey Mouse. We don't question it. Um, although, you know, I always disclose it could be an issue when you turn around and sell your property, 
but we will we don't take Bitcoin yet. Um, so that's another question that we get a lot. But yeah, overseas money is fine. All right. Duffel bag with cash in it, all good, all right? Yeah. All right. Are we recording going to be on the YouTube channel? Probably, yes. Why split on city tax? So it's customary and city transfer tax because again the the amount is based it's the sales price times three dollars and thirty cents and i think oh, i'm sorry go ahead oh and it's just a typically it's a higher expense so i think it's become customary that they split it and just to say so everything is negotiable about closing costs and you'll see that in different counties there's different customs um, is there a law that says you have to follow the customs? The answer is no, you can negotiate. You also will notice if you look at different counties and different cities, some of them have complicated tiered transfer city taxes. And some some parts of the county do and some, car, some cities don't. And sometimes they're all based upon the price and sometimes the seller pays and sometimes the buyer pays and sometimes they split it. So in that's um, we can provide a customary closing cost and it goes through all the different counties um, that you can also keep to have handy on your desktop. I keep mine and, you know, even after 20 some odd years, I still jump into it to reference because right. you know, it changes and it's not customary for me. And I'm happy yeah. to um, email it to you guys. We have that for all counties of, of um, California. Right. And you could bookmark um on your browser um i have fancy bookmark chicago title transfer tax.com which is what i tend to use although we're doing so much it's not loading very quickly <laughs> of course but anyhow chicago title transfer tax tax.com is there we go so and, and this is what i meant about the city tax being complicated look at alameda county all right, look at all the different, you know, so Berkeley has different rules, are all different rules, which makes it uh, complicated. But um, this is what I keep so that because I, you know, uh, can just bookmark it and check it when I'm looking at agents transactions. All right. Is that OK to give you a push for that? Um, are, are the title fees exact for Chicago title fees or estimates? Uh, on the app, they are exact. And do you service Southern California? We can do anywhere in California. Absolutely. Anywhere in the nation, by the way. Yeah. Uh, personally, yeah. yeah. The app is designed for nationwide usage. So we, anywhere in the nation. Can we do overseas yet? Not yet. No. <laughs> um, Only the US of A. All right. Are there any disclaimers we need to make, Ken asks, about the net sheets? Well, there's, there is uh, in small fine print, just like any documents, right? It's basically say it is only an estimate. But as far as fees and who pays what is pretty accurate. Um, Lori asks, suppose in this example, seller had not paid second installment, which they would have paid on April 10th. So then if I've, I had already indicated because we're so close to the tax date that the seller paid it. And then she may have asked that question before I got to the bottom where we actually charged the seller the taxes because they hadn't been paid. And if we get past April 10th and taxes still aren't paid, I'm gonna charge the seller the full installment plus any penalties that may have occurred as well. All right. Then there's, um, what does premium give you? I assume you're talking about the premium version of the app. I assume. Oh, if you upgrade to premium. Oh, yes. Well, that's another session. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because today, so, it's all about net sheet, but the premium, I can give you a, a summary of that. It's basically what we provide you this app is no charge right this is our service to you um but when you upgrade it to the premium for a dollar a month or less or ten dollars a year you get all kinds of um 
features that included in that a dollar a month. You get infographics, which probably about 40 of them uh, templates, how to, you know, branding you. Um, so you can use it for marketing. You can use that to post it on social media. And then it also have customized um, videos in there. Um, it also have filters that you can use that fun stuff for birthdays, open houses, uh, beautiful backyard, um, holidays, all that you can use for fun. And then um, last but not least is the lead gen calculators, which you can use to post on social media to capture leads. Well, we'll have to hear about that. If I, um, uh, I believe I've upgraded, but one of my, let's say I'm going on a listing appointment and I'm not really too sure what price the seller is going to want. Is there a way to have like a range of prices as uh, done as a report? Yes, yeah, pretty easy. So say if you're sitting in front of your seller and they said, okay, if you were to sell my property for a million five, you enter that, you show them the net sheet, um, the net proceed. And then they say, well, what if it's a million two? All you have to do, just click back on the, um, the app, and then you can just scroll down and change the sales price. And then click compute again, it will show your new net proceed. Was there a way that the program automatically generated several prices? I saw like a report. Well, so, so then you can use this feature, it's called multiple offers. So right. pretending that you actually have multiple offers, right? then you can enter different prices and it will show the net proceeds side by side. Okay. I, I think what I was thinking about is I thought that there was a report, like once you've computed it and you're going to share or print for the upgraded version where it gave several prices. It like summarized, it automatically took, you know, a, a, several prices because we don't know if the seller is gonna want 1.25 1.3, 1.35, 1.325, and it would automatically generate different price points. So I could show it to a seller at you know these different so, price points. This is your right, net. So this is some of my agents. This is what they did before the appointment. That's what they did. Yeah. So they did um, several scenarios and then print it and bring it with them to the right. listing appointment. That sounds safe. And by the way, my suggestion for those, all of you is to not only get the app on your phone, but learn how to use it. Because I've been sitting with sellers and they're saying, well, how about this number? How about that number? You know, right there in real time, they were expecting answers. And if you've learned how to use the app, then you can, you know, answer the question. You know. um, uh, other, other questions, uh, let's see. Interested in a recording in a sample net sheet? We could probably help you with that. Does the app input the automatic customary fees in the yes. title and escrow? The answer is yes. If you enter, um, you select the correct county and city, right. and it will. And does your app work outside of Silicon Valley? Does it work in Southern California? Uh, yes, nationwide. Nationwide, right. I did one actually for a property in Arizona not that long ago. Um, Annette says you explain things very thoroughly and well. Thank you, Annette, for that. Thank you. I'm back now. Linda mm -hmm. and Melissa. Uh, does the app calculate city transfer tax? Yes. Automatically, customary for each county? Yes. If LA County is different, will the app address that? Yes. I, I just answered those for you if that was okay. Yes. And, and then, yes. Um, we have somebody saying that they don't see Sacramento as a county. It uh, is. It is in there. If you go into uh, the drop down, click on Northern California, click on Sacramento, and we'll have a drop down of counties. Click Sacramento. Right. And there is Sacramento County. So, any well done. Um, and can you go over the tabs, multiple offers and holding costs quickly? So um, if we have time, but I know that the presentation today, we our goal is to go over the net sheet and how to explain it, understand it. And then Melissa was gonna add on, she was gonna go over the how to um, 
understand the HOA docs. Should we be doing that now? Is that, are we spending too much time we on can. that? I, we included a copy of a, a basic HOA demand. Um, again, it's more of just a visual for an experience for you to look at. Um, we wasn't sure, you know, given that this is our first go around with this, what exactly you guys wanted to see in comparison to understand how I take the data given to me and apply it to our statements. My suggestion is that we do another class on that subject because I bet a lot of people would like to understand about the HOA demands and how it works as well as how to use the, uh, the app, right? Sure. So we'll schedule that. We'll uh, and text if you have any more requests. But those sound like two good topics we could do. Is the 3.33 percent only charged for rentals, or is it charged for other property types? Is owner occupied always exempt from this 3.3? Is a question. Yes. Somebody. If it's your if it's your own, if you are an owner occupied, you are exempt. If you've taken a loss or zero gain, you are exempt. Um, if you, if this is not, if this is a rental property and you're exchanging, which is a whole nother topic, um, into another property, you are exempt. So there are a few, um, I'm happy to send you a blank 593 form so you can kind of look at it, but really that form, because we're not CPAs, we're not professional tax preparers, we kind of have to give the form to our clients and say, I need you to review this with your CPA or tax preparer and complete it to the best of your ability. All right, uh, Michael, what do you use when you go to a listing appointment? Do you bring a laptop and go over the net sheet or do I print it out? Um, it depends. Sometimes if, if I'm certain that I'm going on an appointment to list the house and I've already talked to them and gotten the numbers, then I um, usually have it in my um, cell phone. I've already set it up in the app so that I can put the numbers in. I don't usually print out net sheets and take them with me because number one, it assumes that I'm hitting the number that the list price is likely to be. Um, and I, I, generally speaking, sellers, don't want to see the whole they don't need to see the whole breakdown right not at the point of putting their home on the market and the app would allow me and sometimes i've done a screenshot rather than emailing them the report but a lot of times they just simply say what do you think my net is likely to be you know and even then most people can figure out that whatever they owe in their loan is subtracted from what they're going to get and then there's costs and so people have a general idea. I don't print out net sheets and take them with me personally. Um, I do take with me a Chromebook as well as my, um, you know, my, my app on the cell phone and the cell phone has the, you know, hotspot turned on and the Chromebook boots pretty much instantly. And so if I'm in a position where they want me to put in some different numbers, what about if we pay for this, what do we pay for state? They really want the numbers and they want it done accurately, then I would use the Chromebook, which is a light little thing to bring. Um, and we've got a few people saying they're going for premiums. Where is the multiple offer feature? That's something we may need to do when we get to the app, but we can do, get to another class, but unless you want to answer that now, Lynn. Sure, it's under the uh, calculators tab. Right, multiple offers. I see it. And yes, so, it's right. pretty simple. You just enter information into applicable fields and then just click compute. Um, well, not compute, click on next. next. Basically, just go down the, the line on each field and, and fill in the information. And then, what's that say? When you, once you finish, you add another offer. And when you finish, it's going to say, you know, you click done, it's going to show side by side um, net sheets for you. You can do, I've done most, I think, four or five. So that may have been what I was thinking about because it looks like the end result. Yeah. That's what I was, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
do you think people use it? See, my reaction is I'm going to explain to my client what their net's going to be from the highest offer we got. Right? You know, especially if it's non-contingent. And that if you this is what you net and all the rest of them, you know, if they're a hundred thousand dollars less, we kind of know that they're going to net a hundred thousand dollars less, give or take, you know. So but that looks very nice. <laughs> One more, another question, I think. Uh, this feature is awesome. I downloaded the walking anyhow. Uh, since your app can be used nationwide, I practice in Oregon. All the, can all I the, mention? Uh, sorry, Mike. Um, so the app, let me, don't download, well, you can download, but this is how it works. First, if you are out of county, you're not in Santa Clara, if you download, uh, the app, and then you you look for me as a rep, and it say you say you select uh, Alameda County as your primary county, then you will not find me on the list. So the important thing is, please let me send you the link so that when you can download it, that's one option. Or if you were to download, select Santa Clara County first, and then you can find me on the list as the options as your rep, then you can select me. After that, you can change the county. Make sense? Yeah, and I have pasted your contact information into the chat. Okay, thank you. And All then right. um, the other two apps is the Title Now, which is give you access to pull property profile anywhere using your phone. And the other one is the Walk-in Farm. You can download those two apps, but without me register you with Chicago Title Premier Services, you will not have access to it. So with that being said, you have to email me your contact information. I need to register first, send you an email with user ID and password, then you can access those apps. And would you be willing to do an uh, explanation of how those work in a later session? Sure. Absolutely. I said cool. yes. <laughs> She's my boss. So. <laughs> all right. So, um, yeah, all of those are great topics. This is an area I think everybody appreciates learning more about. I certainly do. Um, I think we've, we've hit the end of our, our road for today, but I want to thank everybody for showing up and reach out to Lynn. I pus pushed the information into the chat. So um, if you want to get copies of any of this good stuff, and thank you all. Be safe out there. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.